Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trayvon's RV Center. Here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Jayco J Feather Micro 166 FB travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at your campsite. First thing to think about on your campsite will be your awning. You plenty of room for that to come out. And on your off campsite, of course your slide. Pretty shallow slide, so not much to worry about there, but leave plenty of room for it to come in and out. Then I want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. They're both going to be located, power and water, on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle at the rear of the unit. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook your hitch, first thing you do is level your unit. Our unit does come with a power tongue jack, a night docking light, simply raise or lower the unit until you're level. Now you do have a hand crank and a manual override right underneath this rubber stopper. So you can get this up and down if you don't have power. Speaking of power, check your battery posts when you arrive. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose coming down the road. Once we've got our unit level, we can stabilize it. On all four corners of the unit, you have stabilizing jacks, three quarter inch hand crank, that on there wiggle that on there and crank these down now as these come down I'm gonna recommend stabilizing jack pads jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot blacktop uh, keep them from sinking into the ground use your 10% off coupon grab a four pack of the of those Put them underneath these feet and run these down just until you have some resistance on your uh, hand crank. Remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. We already have our unit stable or level. All we want to do is run these down and get it stable. Once you've ran all four of these down, got our unit level and stable, we can go ahead and hook up our power. A long 30 amp cord plugs in right here on the rear of your unit. Once you're plugged in, put this black washer on. That'll keep it tied in there. If you need, there's a 30 to 110 adapter. It comes in your convenience pack. Got our power hooked up. Let's hook up our water. At the campsites, we'll hook up the city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Use this when hooked up to city water or your black tank flush. Hook this up, hook up your hose. We don't turn our hose on yet. Let's come up here to your hot water heater. All we're gonna do at this point, make sure our drain plug's back in there. Get that in there nice and snug, and then you can go ahead and turn on your hose. After your hose has been on for a little while, go inside and open up your water taps. After you got a steady flow of water coming out of them, you can go ahead and turn on your hot water heater from inside. Now, if you are gonna go camping, and you're not going to use city water, you're going to go boondocking. In that case, we'll just fill up our fresh water tank. Over on your campsite, just above your tire, is your fresh water tank or your potable water. Simply fill this up with a hose. No need for a water pressure regulator. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside where you check the levels of your battery and black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water button. Once that's full, Unhook your hose 
and then turn on your water pump when you need to use water. And remember, don't turn on your water pump when using city water. That's already pressurized. All right, we got our power and water hooked up. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit, starting here on your campsite. You have this light, so you have a light underneath your steps at night. Cable and 110s out here. You can hook a TV up. Again, your fresh water. Outdoor speakers. A vent for your microwave. Your outdoor fridge. This is a receiver for your grill setup that'll set up out here with a quick connect right there. Your big pass through storage. Down there is your griddle stand. Your battery, your propane does come with a cover. It's on a regulator, simply pointed toward the tank you wish to be using, lefty loosey to open. You are prepped for solar on the side. You can hook up a solar panel right here and it'll trickle charge your batteries. Again, your pass-through storage, your water heater. Here's your low point drain. This white one is for your fresh water, and them two back there are for your city water connections. Coming back around to the back of your unit. Black and gray holding tanks. Your outdoor shower. Black tank flush, we'll talk about that when leaving the campsite. City water connection, your power. Here's where you hook your cable up. Spare tires on the back here. Your ladder, you can remove these cotters and fold this ladder down against it. There's a vent for your fridge and access to the back of your fridge. A flue for your furnace. Two things, make sure this is never blocked. And two, if you run your furnace, steer clear of it. It will get hot. You're also prepped for a Furion backup camera. Device you can purchase from our store that sits on the dash of your tow vehicle, giving you a backup camera for the unit. And that about covers everything on the outside. Go take a look inside your unit. First thing I like to point out in all units is where the fire extinguisher is. Make sure that you and everyone is camp with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. To the left of that on the floor coming in the entry doorway will be your access panel to your breaker box and fuses. That'll be your furnace. And your fury on fridge. Coming immediately to the right. As you come in, is your access panel, control panel. There's your brand new battery. Fresh, black, and gray tanks. That's the fresh button I said you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full. Over here is where you turn on your water heater hooked up to electric. Water heater hooked up to gas. Doesn't make a difference. Use these accordingly. Here's where you turn on your water pump if using potable water. There's your awning light. Living room lights. Slide extend and awning extend. We'll go ahead and run that awning out for you. And see the bottom of your awning is white, the top is gray. As you get out here, you'll see this white flap come down. When that comes down and hangs down to 90 degrees, and you can see your brown bar. That's as far as you want to bring that out. That will extend past that, so keep an eye on it. Run that back in. We'll run your slide back in when we leave the campsite. Close your awning up here. Turn off our awning lights and continue our unit. I do have a lot of one-touch lighting throughout the unit. A self-explanatory microwave. Below that you have a fan and a light. Your glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. So if you turn this to light, hit your spark and there's your flame. You have this panel light. Come to the left of that will be your Furion television. Find your remote here and turn that on.
You see on here is your AC. Over here you have a hand crank open power exhaust vent here with four different speeds. There's your TV. All in one entertainment center. Remote will be in here and you also have paperwork for the unit right here. You have a slide curtain for your bedroom. Emergency exit window. It'll pop up USB power port. Down here is storage that will strap in. Of course, you know your sofa will jackknife down into a bed. Tea, or, uh, dining table back here. Lift up on the front. Pull towards you on the back. More individual lighting up underneath here. One ten in USB port. Down here in the floor is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Now the reason I mention that's 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're going to be gone for the day, if you are boondocking and you have nothing plugged in charging your battery, use your battery disconnect to keep this from charge, running your battery down. Now this unit doesn't have a battery disconnect, so you'll just uh, unhook your one of your battery posts, preferably your positive, and that'll keep this from running your battery down while you're gone. Here in the wall is your furnace. Turn that to the left to turn on. They are kind of tough to turn. There's your furnace. So shut your furnace back off. You notice your furn furnace fan takes a few minutes to shut off. They always do. Over here is your solar control panel. What this does is it keeps your solar panel from overcharging your battery. I'm going to send you a separate video on this. You just need to make sure that you are on wet battery. Coming in your bathroom, you do have a hand crank open power exhaust vent in here. Sorry, I didn't have the lighter fan turned on. Turn that on here so you can control it from here. 110 with US uh, GFCI reset and plumbing. Maintain your plumbing underneath your sink. In your ceiling is your smoke alarm. Again, your AC. That about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite. So the first thing I like to do is shut off my living room lights because then I can see any individual lighting that I may have left on. So our lights are off, turn your living room back on, and retract your slide. Slide comes in rather quickly here. It's okay to hear that noise, that's the slide telling itself it's in far enough. Once you hear that, you know you're in. Close that, light off, exit your unit. Now on this, these steps, you want to make sure this exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this will catch on it. You'll see how close it comes here. Once that's in, lock that. Now this door here, over on this side, you just have to slide that all the way over here. And then when you arrive, press this down and bring that back over. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door, lift and turn your handle. At this point, we're going to bring up all of our stabilizing jacks, unhook our power, our water, and our cable. So we know our water's unhooked. We're going to come to our low point drain. Again, fresh water tank here in the white. If you hooked up the city, dump those two. After that water's done, come up here to your water pressure regulator, or, or your uh, release. Pull up on that until all the water's out of your hot water heater. Once it is, you can pull your drain. Pressure release valve. That's what I was looking for. Close that up, hook up your hitch, and head on up to the dump station. Now at the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is going to be behind your tire on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. 
You have a 10 foot hose that comes to your convenience pack. Hook that up and pull our black holding tank. That's gonna be this one, the black one. After that sounds like it's no longer draining, leave that black handle open. Again, with your water pressure regulator, come up here to your tank flush. Hook up the hose at the dump station, again with that black handle open, and run that hose for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. Unhook your hose, close this black handle, and pull your gray handle. That's gonna be cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. That'll clean your sewage hose out for you. Once that sounds like it's no longer draining, close your gray tank, close up your sewage hose, and conveniently and sanitarily, store your sewage hose right in here. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this feather for many years to come. Happy camping.